Hi everyone, uh, this article is to explain how to navigate the Eugene software when using a modular ECU. Firstly, when the software starts, it presents you with a startup screen like this. From here, you can choose whether you want to open an ECU file to work offline, update the firmware in the ECU, change software settings, or exit. In most cases, you'll be working online, which means having an ECU connected at the time when you're using the software. So if an ECU is connected via USB, then the software will automatically read the settings from the ECU, and the settings that you see will be a reflection of what's inside the ECU. Note that with select and modular ECUs, you don't need 12 volt power applied to the ECU for this to work. It can get power from the USB. If you want to work offline, you can click open ECU file and then load the ECU file that you want to look at. The software settings screen allows you to change software settings such as language, unit selection and ECU connection without actually connecting an ECU or loading up an ECU file. And there's also an option to update the firmware in an ECU from this screen so that if an ECU has got corrupted firmware somehow and you can't connect it to load the settings out of the ECU, you can still update the firmware in the ECU this way. The firmware update procedure is going to be covered later. Once you You've either opened an ECU file or connected an ECU and read the settings out of the ECU, the software presents you with the main screen. Along the top there are menu options such as home, engine setup, inputs, outputs, fuel tuning and so on. These allow you to select the area of settings in the ECU that you want to look at or change. I won't be covering them all in this article. Once you've selected a menu, for example home, the contents of that ribbon will appear below and then you can select the option that you want. Note that the screens and the settings that appear will depend on which sort of ECU is connected and what settings you have in the ECU. For example, connecting a select or a modular ECU will show completely different maps because the modular has a lot more maps than the select ECU does. And similarly, if your fuel tuning mode selected as map only, then you're not going to see a TPS map. The first section is called file, and this is really for just good file hygiene. So it allows you to load and save ECU files using the normal Windows file requester. By default, Eugene makes a folder in My Documents for you to save your files in. And what we recommend that you do is make your own folder for each car that you do. And then it's up to you to save the files regularly with different names, such as 001, 002 and so on, so that you can revert to an earlier version if you need to. There is also an import function which allows you to read some of the settings for another ECU file without overriding all of the settings. So for example, if you have a map um, but you want to import the dwell time from another file which is the same ignition coils as what you're trying to use now, then you can just import the dwell table. The E button at the top left gives you some other options as well, including access to recent files. The next section is unit selection. Normally you wouldn't need to change these more than once, but because one of the first things that you need to do when you start the software is select the units that you're going to use, we decided to make it obvious rather than having to go through a menu option to find them. Also, when tuning, I'll often change between Lambda and AFR or PSI and KPA depending on what other instrumentation I'm using at the same time. And down the bottom right of that section is a shortcut to the software settings window. Just one point to remember, these settings don't actually change how the variables are stored inside the ECU. So the ECU always thinks in Lambda, but if you select AFR, then it will show you the Lambda times 14.7. Now this obviously is only going to be correct if you're using gasoline or petrol as your fuel. But what I've discovered is when people ask to see um, air fuel ratio rather than lambda, every time they've asked for petrol AFR rather than the actual AFR. So if they're running E85 at stoichiometry, it will still display 14.7 rather than 10.0. I know that mathematically this is wrong, but the reason why people ask it is because they're going to be comparing it to a wideband gauge which is set up for 14.7 being the stoichiometric ratio, and they never change it. This bothers you as it does me, then you should use lambda. Similarly, the ECU does not think in manifold gauge pressure. It uses a map sensor and the calculations are all done based on map. If you need to understand why, then you can watch my talk from PRI called Fuel Modeling from Map to Milliseconds, and that explains why. So the only time when barometric pressure actually matters to the ECU is if you're taking other measurements relative to map that are themselves measured with a gauge pressure sensor. So for example, fuel pressure is normally measured with a gauge pressure sensor rather than an absolute pressure sensor. So to be able to measure differential fuel pressure, which is the fuel pressure minus the manifold pressure, you need to know the fuel gauge pressure, manifold absolute pressure, and you need the barometric pressure to be able to subtract the two. And similarly, if you're doing pressure ratio tuning, then the EMAP is an absolute pressure as well. So the ECU thinks of MAP in KPA, but what I've discovered is that when people ask to see MAP in PSI, 
they actually want to see the gauge pressure rather than the absolute pressure. So we still call it MAP, even though it's actually MGP, um, and, and we display it by taking the MAP and subtracting one bar from it. To make matters even more complicated, the people that want to see boost in PSI also want to see vacuum in inches of mercury. So the software does that calculation as well. We also output this conversion for race dashes because the race dashes don't seem to do this calculation. The next panel across includes the software settings, which also include the ability to read and write all the settings to and from the ECU, update the firmware in the ECU, and ECU security. The software settings allow you to change the units, which have already been discussed. The software settings also allow you to change the language. Eugene has been written to work in a multilingual environment, so we can add in whatever languages we like. You can also change the connection to the ECU. We recommend using USB where possible because that's the fastest way to talk to either select or the modular ECUs. And the final tab gives you some other personal preferences that you can adjust such as the way tables are displayed and that sort of thing. In automatic update mode, Eugene will automatically connect to our server and download any updates that are available. When you close Eugene is when it will ask you if you want to install the latest update. The reason why we didn't do this at the beginning when you start using the software is that we've all had the experience of going to use a piece of software and it won't let you use it until you've updated. Or worse, being on a dyno and trying to tune and suddenly your laptop wants to reset itself because Windows has got 50 updates it wants to install. We didn't want to add to this confusion and frustration, so that's why it updates the software when you've finished using it rather than at the beginning, which is actually when you want to use it right now. As mentioned before, when you start Eugene and connect an ECU, Eugene reads all the settings out of the ECU, so that what you're looking at is a direct reflection of what's inside the box. But if you want to read them out again for whatever reason, you can just click read all and it will read all the settings out of the ECU again. Similarly, when you make a change to the ECU settings, that gets written and updated and stored in the ECU straight away. However, if you want to write all the settings to the ECU for whatever reason, you can click write all and that will write all the settings back to the ECU. With either of these, the progress will be displayed on the bottom left of the, the screen in the status bar. The update firmware function allows you to update the firmware in the ECU. Just like reading and writing settings, this does not need 12 volt power applied to the ECU to be able to do this. Actually switch off the ignition so that there's no chance of any firmware doing anything to the engine while the ignition's on. Clicking on update firmware brings up the firmware update window. From there the window tells you the serial number of the connected ECU and the version of firmware already in it. Click on load to load the firmware which will be a file ending in .adf. Once that's loaded, you can click program and it will load that into the ECU. The progress bar at the bottom moves in segments as each module in the ECU needs to be programmed separately. They all have their own processes which is how you can keep adding to the ECU without it affecting performance. So they all need to have their firmware updated as well. This all happens transparently, all you see is the progress bar updating. You should also click verify to make sure that the firmware update has been completed correctly. It's very quick to do and it's good practice to do so. Once that's done you can click exit on this window. The COM port button allows you to change the ECU connection just like in the software settings window. The lock ECU function on a modular ECU allows you to lock the ECU so that it can't be read by someone else. The only way that you can change the settings in an ECU after this is by loading in a completely new file, unless you have the unlock code. People's motivations for this varies between um, protecting a map that they've developed over the last 10 years from being copied, uh, preventing people from playing with their own engines and blowing them up, and also to, to protect against scrutiny from internet experts who can, look at a, who can magically look at a map and see that it's wrong without actually knowing what the engine does. The lock code is an eight hex digit number, so digits zero to nine and the letters A to F, which gives you 32 bits of code in total. The locking can only be done with the engine not running but again, it does not need 12 volt power to do that. There is a second button called Optimize. This does a similar thing to locking in that it's, it rewrites the settings in the ECU in a way that it's very fast to read, but it doesn't actually provide any security. This also can only be done with the engine stopped. The ECU periodically does this anyway if it detects that it's necessary, so in practice you don't normally need to use this button. I've never used it. The custom page view allows you to make your own pages with different maps and variables displayed on it. The next section called Quick Links has got shortcuts to the fuel and ignition maps. You can also reach these by pressing the F5 key. The next section allows you to control the logging. Eugene records the logs in two log formats. There's our proprietary binary format, the ALG file, and also a standard CSV format that you can use for reading in any other log viewer. The ALG format includes metadata such as the ECU file that was actually in the ECU when the log was started. It also includes a lot more data, about a thousand channels or so. The CSV file doesn't include the map, 
and the number of channels in a CSV file is much more limited. Although you can select your own CSV channels that you particularly want to see. The reason why we prefer the ALG file, which stores everything, is that Murphy's Law will tell you that sooner or later you're going to want to look in a log file and you're going to look for a variable that you didn't actually log. Start log or pressing Control L, same as in Wari, opens a file requester and you can choose where to save the log and what name to give it. By default the name is the date and the time. It will then start saving the log in both formats at once and show logging at the bottom left of the screen. Stop log or Control K stops the logging. Open Log Viewer opens the Adaptronic Log Viewer program and opens the last log that you just recorded. The log converter button allows you to import an ALG file and export it as a CSV file. So if there were some variables that you wanted to log but you didn't, but you still have the ALG file, you can recover them this way. And that way you can view it in Excel or some other third party log viewer program. The next panel is for help and documentation. Currently this shows you the wiring information of the ECU. So this shows a picture of the ECU connector, shown looking into the ECU, and a list of all the pins at the bottom. For each pin, you can enter your own description of what the pin's connected to, and also a wire colour. So for the base maps, we include the factory wire colours and pin descriptions. These can be changed by the tuners, so for example, if you're using auxiliary output 2 as a variable valve lift output, you can write that in there, and then it means that when you're looking at the auxiliary outputs page, you know which one does what. The injector and ignition outputs are also shown based on how the EC is configured. So for example, if you have a three rotor engine with two injection stages, instead of injector outputs one to six being labeled one to six, they'll be labeled as injector one primary, injector two primary, injector three primary, injector one secondary, injector two secondary, injector three secondary. And similarly with ignition outputs, if you're using a spark split mode so for on a rotary, for example, then they'll be displayed rather than just having the numbers of the outputs. From this screen you can also open the wiring diagram as a PDF file so that you can print it if you want to. The final panel allows Eugene to submit an ECU file and a log file to Adaptronic's tech support team rather than saving separate files and emailing them. You must enter a valid email address to be able to receive the response. This goes through our one support system which also covers the sales and tech email addresses, the Facebook page messages and Facebook page posts. And just like with any support what we need is a log showing the problem that you're encountering and also a text description so we know what to look for. In all the screens you can select whether to show or hide the monitor which is a bunch of gauges down the right hand side. The top part of the monitor window is common between all pages so you can show variables that you always want to see like engine speed, manifold pressure and coolant temperature while the bottom part can be customised for each individual page depending on what you want to see when you're setting up that table. There are some other useful functions on the main window. At the top right is a blue question mark button which allows you to search for functions. By that I mean you can look for specific settings in the ECU or you can search the help files as well. For example, if you don't know where to find the target slip table for traction control, you can go to the search bar and type in target slip and it will find the setting for you. You can double click on that and find and go to the actual map. At the bottom of the screen there's a larger search bar which does the same function. Next to that is some other information that you'd normally want to see while tuning, such as the time, battery status of the laptop and the date. There are two indicators on the left as well. One is the ECU lock status, so whether it's locked or unlocked, and the, the other is the ECU connection status, so whether it's connected or not, if we're reading settings, writing settings, if we're logging or not, and the serial number of the ECU. And also the type of the ECU and the firmware version. Just above that is a list of the screens that you've just previously gone to. So you can navigate back to them easily. I believe in web design this is called breadcrumbs as some reference to Hansel and Gretel. That covers the home ribbon. The next articles are going to go through the other ribbons and how to set up an ECU from scratch. <laughs>